some of these artifacts, they do for that reason because they, they date a lot of stuff based on the site that they found it. So if there's organic material at the site that they found it, and what's been I've found it's it's a kind of like a smoking gun piece in all of this, is all the vases. So you, are you familiar with the, yes, the incredible yes, stone vases yes, that they yes, make yeah, in Egypt? Please talk about them. Yeah. So they in in there is a, a collection of these things. They're made from igneous stone. They're and Jamie, I've got a few pictures of the vases in that vase directory, and they date back. It's what's interesting to me about these is is that they they they're some of the earliest types of. Uh, artifacts that we find, they stretch back far into what we'd call pre-dynastic time, basically Mesolithic times. Uh, right back to even 15,000 years ago, there was a site called Toshka um, that uh, that was dug up. It's underwater now, but in this, and it was a primitive burial. There was a guy uh, that was be- curled up in this in this burial site on the side. Go back to that, Jamie, that one, the thin card one. Yeah, what is, so, what's going on there? So this is an example, and these vases display just astonishing aspects of precision and engineering. So this is an example of just how thin this material is. So it's igneous stone. This might be porphyry or something like this. A very, very hard stone, very hard to work, but also brittle when it becomes thin. You can see the giant crystal occlusions, those the white marks in it. This stuff becomes brittle, yet it's been worked down to this thinness because this one's been damaged and you can see how thin that interior mm. wall is. Petrie, Flinders Petrie is a, a great Egyptologist, the first guy to really start applying engineering principles from the industrial age of this stuff. He found one, he talks about one in his work that was one fortieth of an inch thick. Wow. A fortieth of an inch thick. And the the interesting thing about these vases, there's 50,000 plus of them were discovered beneath the step pyramid of Djoser. Uh, he collected them all up. And even in the museum that's at Saqqara, they talk about, yeah, this is so, I've been down underneath the step pyramid. This is a fragment of, a, of one of these vases that I found you can handle down there. And even in the museum there, they talk about, well, these, he didn't have them made. He, these were inherited objects from earlier times. Like, they, they get the concept right. And so these things stretch back way back into time. There's pre-dynastic artifacts from pre-dynastic burials. But there's always these sort of arguments, well, can you do this by hand? Can you not? Um, and so recently, there's been some work done. I've been working with a couple of guys, um, the son of uh, Christopher Dunn, who wrote some real seminal uh, textbooks on ancient Egyptian technology, his son, Alex. Uh, and Nick Sierra, they're uh, qualified like professional metrologists. They work they work for Rolls Royce in Indianapolis. They uh, they make like you know aerospace parts, turbine blades, things like that. They've got their hands on a pre dynastic Egyptian vase, and for the first time, they've actually been able to scan this thing using a structured light scanner and define the specific elements of precision on it. And it's just astounding. Like this is. This, this puts the whole concept of can these even remotely been made by hand to bed? Like these things had to have been made on a machine and made with extreme precision because this vase that is, is pre-dynastic, this is a, a picture of the vase here that they found in, in a private collection because I should say generally archaeologists, Egyptologists, they're not engineers. They're not particularly interested in sort of how things were manufactured. So what, what they've done is they've taken this and put this in a machine and it, it, it's a structured light scanner. So it creates like a point cloud of different lights and then you match a geometric shape to it, be that like a, a flat plane, a cylinder, a sphere, a, a cone. And then you can perform sort of geometric um, calculations on it and define things like precision. So if you go back to that, uh, the surface A, the vase lip, right? So this is you can see down on the bottom, they, they've created a, a, a point cloud of the top of this lip, so the flatness, and it's, they've called this surface A. It's comprised of 3,813 uh, points, and it's within three thousandths of an inch uh, of being basically perfectly flat. Wow. But and that's three thousandths of three an inch. Three thousandths of an inch. And this is over who knows how many thousands of years well, of erosion and it, sand and dust and wind. And exactly. It's, it's at least... 5,000 years old. I, I suspect this could be far older than that. Now, what's interesting, once you start doing this, and if you go to the next one, Jamie, you now, he's now, now we're looking at the, the lip. So this, you take a cylinder and you match, you basically take 10,000 points plus and you match the, the, the inside, the mouth of the vase to a cylinder. And what you can now measure that against the other surface. So if you think of like the top of it as being like the x-axis, this is now your y-axis. So that first symbol here, the perpendicular symbol, what, you sh- what it's showing is that how perpendicular is this cylinder on its axis relative to the top of the vase, the surface A that's on the top, within one thousandth of an inch. One thousandth. So it's perfectly perpendicular to within one thousandth of an inch of the top of the vase. And then the second reading here 
shows you how perfectly what's the circular error like what's the circularity of it's within thirteen thousandths of an inch of being perfectly circular how and are you going to do that by hand? You, you, well, you can't. This is this is the thing. And if you you, you go, literally can't. No, the, no one's ever been at you. It gets you can you if you rub two surfaces together, you can make them flat. But when you start looking at the the real teller in in precision and in these discussions about ancient engineering, the the it's an easy thing to understand when we talk about ninety degree turns and flat surfaces. But what gets really interesting is when you start talking about one surface in relation to another. And remember, these objects like the big boxes in the Serapium that weigh like 70 tons, you've got surfaces, you know, 11 feet apart. It's the relativity of one surface to another. So how flat, how straight is this in relationship to this surface? Right. And with this vase, the, the, the incredible thing about it is, is that it's, as you go down it, there's a, another slide if go you can look the at image. the, yeah. Um, and you should mention how much this equipment costs real quick. Well, yeah, so these technology. structured light scanners are like $250,000. They're, they're professional. Yeah, this is, this is absolutely a tool that gets used in aerospace quite a bit. So no one's ever um, really done this type of work. So um, this – and it does – there's nothing like this approaching. You can't do this with handwork, this type of thing. But if you slip, skip to the next one – so now it's – this is like – this is a great example – so what you're doing here is is measuring the circularity. Go to the next one because the lug handles are kind of the really important part of this. It's an interesting thing. So for one thing, it's showing you that, okay, they, they solved the problem of carving granite. It's made from granite. It's actually made from the same rose granite that the, the box in the king's chamber of the Great Pyramid is. Yeah, not pottery, just to, not in pottery. case someone doesn't right. understand this what this is. Right. This isn't pottery. I, I, People can, often can call it pottery. pause real quick? Yeah. When you talk about these measurements, yeah. what kind of measurements can be achieved through ceramic pottery? Well, ceramic pottery... If you're spinning on a wheel, I, I'm not even sure. You might be able to get down to, to tenths of an inch or, 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 or half. Like but you would never get to a thousandth. Not to a thousandth, no. And, and this is carved. So this is carved out right. of stone. Right. Um, but I'm stone. just saying, like, if you think about a pottery wheel spinning yeah. and you think about the precision involved in that and you look at it, it's beautiful. It seems oh, symmetrical. It seems to me. But nothing no. compared to this kind of symmetry. And so to give you an example, so a thousandth of an inch – uh, if you take a sheet of printer paper like this, uh, this is that's about seven and a half thousandths thick. Holy shit! A, a human hair, two to three thousandths of an inch. So it's half a the human size hair. of a human hair within of being perfect. Of being within, perfect. Yes. So holy shit! That's how that's how precisely aligned the mouth of the vase is. Now, so f again, we've carved this out of stone, and remember, they don't even the uh, Egyptologists don't say that these they're not spun, they're not they're not cast and created. They say that the Egyptians, you know, used very primitive tools to make these pounding stones, chisels, flint 